Back in school, having a phone became essential for me around grade 4 or 5. That would mean I was around 10 or 11 years old. It was a good time. No one really cared if you had an iPhone or not. Everyone just wanted to play Snake or Bounce on their Nokias. Nowadays, a phone means more than just taking or making phone calls sending and receiving text messages, or even snake and bounce. We need an internet connection and it needs to be the fastest available, whether it's Wi-Fi 6 or 5G. We need dual stereo speakers and a nice AMOLED display to enjoy as much video content as possible, whether vertical or horizontal. We also need a nice set of cameras to make content for other people to hopefully watch or see. And last but not the least, the phone's battery life needs to be able to last long enough and on top of all that it needs to be affordable for whoever is buying it well that's a-okay because in this video we might have just the phone that can pretty much provide all those things and a little bit more it's the samsung galaxy a35 5g stick around to find out more This is the Samsung Galaxy A35 5G. You guys already saw its slightly more expensive brother in our last video featuring the A55 5G. Following in the vein of their more expensive flagship cousins, the Galaxy A35 5G features the updated more flat-sided aesthetic seen in the S24 series. Our review unit is in its navy blue color option, but the A35 5G is also available in ice blue and lilac. I personally think that the navy blue looks pretty good. Jose mentioned in the A55 review that he was convinced that the frame was made out of metal, and I'm certain he's right. Though, with the A35, we get a plastic frame. It's definitely thick and feels sturdy enough to fool anyone's first glance into thinking that it is metal, which definitely scores points in the build department if you ask me. Either way, in this instance, it does not make the device feel less premium. At the top resides the A35's dual nano SIM card tray. The second SIM slot is a hybrid one that allows for expandable storage followed by a noise-canceling microphone. In the top bezel of the display is a thin slit where one of the stereo speaker drivers reside and also acts as the earpiece for taking calls. The bottom of the phone features noise-canceling microphones, a USB Type-C port for charging and wired data transfers, and a speaker grill that houses the second stereo speaker. The volume rocker and power button are on the right side on a hello, a hump, because this makes the buttons extra tactile? Or is this just one other way of separating the A's from the M's and the S's? If you catch my drift, the back is clean and minimal. From afar, this could be an S23 or S24. And it's cool that the rings of the housings of the triple camera setup gets navy blue accenting to complement the minimalist design aesthetic. We also get subtle Samsung branding under the glass back panel. That's right, glass back panel, not glastic or plastic. Although I don't think that this back panel features Gorilla Glass protection like the A55. But overall, its build quality feels sturdy and nice, thanks to the use of higher quality materials compared to the even more affordable Galaxy A05 and A05s. It's a subtle but nice nod to how Samsung either elevates or cripples the experience, catering to different budget segments. The display's bezels here are an eyesore compared to something more slim, and my hands are ergonomically unoptimized for its dimensions, but there are bigger hands out there, so this could be marked as preferential. Speaking of display, the Galaxy A35 5G has thick bezels, but it makes up for it with its be a beautiful 6.6-inch Full HD Plus Super AMOLED display that refreshes at 120Hz and gets a peak brightness of 1000 nits. And for display protection, users should be happy to have Corning Gorilla Glass Victus Plus, which you'll most likely put a screen protector on top of anyways, because come on. So in usual Samsung smartphone fashion, this display 
rocks. It's big, colors can be set to vivid or natural. The blacks look sick with great contrast, yada yada. But what really blew me away in media consumption is this awesome display paired with dual stereo speakers. We even get the Dolby Atmos toggle on board that just noticeably elevates the experience in a tap. Like, the already loud dual stereo speakers were good, but with Dolby Atmos enabled, it just turned that loudness into like a more 3D surround sound type of thing. You honestly just have to experience it yourself to get what I'm talking about. Either way, I've been glued to using the Galaxy A35 for all my Netflix binges for over two weeks now. Pro tip, there is an extra dim mode if it's like 5 a.m. and you haven't gone to sleep yet and maybe you want an easier time going to sleep apart from the blue light filter or eye comfort shield as they call it. So in a nutshell, the speakers sound great. They get loud, louder than my daily Galaxy S23 bass, with the S23 taking the crown in clarity. But this isn't to say that the A35's clarity is terrible either. It gets good lows and mids with highs that can leave a little more desired, but in general use, everyday users won't really be able to tell, and they sound good regardless. For biometrics, we get an optical in-display fingerprint scanner and face unlock. The fingerprint scanner is quick and has a nice and bigger than usual scanning area, which users can only really notice when adding fingerprints. It's just one of those things that you won't notice work well in the background. So good job, Samsung. And the face unlocking option works accurately in average lit conditions, but in this case, is even slower at recognition than the fingerprint scanner, but could still be useful if end users are wearing gloves or have wet hands or something. For optics, the Samsung Galaxy A35 5G delivers a complete enough experience with its blueprint somewhat inspired by the S24 series launched earlier this year. The triple camera setup at the rear is headlined by a 50 megapixel main sensor that features phase detection, autofocus, and optical image stabilization, followed by an 8 megapixel ultra-wide sensor for more dynamic shots. And last but not the least is the 5 megapixel macro camera that does feel like an oversight for a more favorable telephoto lens in our opinion, but allows for close-up photography. Under the display in front resides the 13 megapixel sensor for selfies. Checking out some sample shots, right away we can see how Samsung's image processing has matured over the years. Photos taken with the main 50 megapixel sensor at the rear look great on this phone. In usual Samsung fashion, we get a cooler white balance with vibrantly saturated color reproduction, with skin tones produced a bit more warm than natural. Shots with the ultra-wide sensor tend to gain a lot more noise in average to dim lit conditions, and shots taken with the very same sensor remind us more of the old Samsung image processing in favor of a cooler white balance, which kind of contrasts the main camera's image processing. But hey, who knows, maybe it was just the sample we took. I feel like they could have included a better, more updated ultra-wide sensor on the A35 5G, but I guess if they did that, the A55 5G wouldn't exist because you do get a higher megapixel count ultra-wide sensor on that device. The macro sensor is cool to have, but we still don't think it's cooler than a telephoto sensor. It also isn't the worst implementation of a macro camera we've seen, nor is it the best out there. So I think that's fair. It's a nice secondary sensor to have when you want to get closer to your subjects, but not too close, if you guys get what I mean. And selfies taken with the 13 megapixel in-display sensor look pretty good for the most part, tuned to match the main camera at the rear more than any of the others at the rear. For video, the Galaxy A35 5G is capable of recording 4K or Ultra HD at 30 frames per second with both the front and rear cameras. And in hindsight, the cameras on this phone aren't the best out there, but it does offer a good balance of very usable images with the main and selfie cameras to less than favorable but still usable secondary camera sensors. Samsung's image processing algorithms have matured and really there's nowhere to go but up from here in terms of image quality.
For software, the Samsung Galaxy A35 5G comes with the latest Android 14 out of the box, skinned with a somewhat full-fledged One UI 6.1 on top, which is awesome. This means this isn't the light version found in their more affordable handsets. This is a big boy One UI, giving users awesome link to Windows features if you use a Windows computer, basically allowing your Samsung A35 to talk to your Windows laptop or computer. We also get my preferred shortcuts like double pressing the power button while locked to quickly boot the camera and swiping with two fingers from the bottom of the screen to activate a split screen view. You could even just activate the camera as well. That's you guys, say hello. The actual software experience is smooth and responsive with UI animations optimized for the 120 hertz refresh rate. One UI is a very intuitive interface that allows its users cool perks like being able to make pop-up windows with YouTube without subscribing to premium. What this version of One UI on the A35 does not have is Samsung's DeX support, which allows users to connect their Samsung phones to a display via a cable or wirelessly to enable a more desktop-like experience to maximize productivity on your phone, which technically doesn't really lessen the experience from the A35 5G, but it would have been nice to have at a budget less than 25,000 pesos. Although with One UI, we also have access to Good Lock via the Galaxy Store, which can give more users who like to tinker more functionality and customization out of their Galaxy phone. Either way, I'm sure most users will like One UI and all the cool features it has to offer. Yes, we still get some repeat apps like Google and Samsung's messaging apps because each one has their own RCS messaging networks. But there's also Samsung Internet and Chrome and even two app markets, which are very usual Samsung things. Either way, users can easily uninstall what they don't want, or if not, set the preferred app by default. And no, neither this Galaxy A35 nor the Galaxy A55 will get an update for Samsung's AI features. But owners of these handsets can rest assured that they have been promised four major OS upgrades and five years of security updates. Running the Galaxy A35 5G's show is a Samsung Exynos 1380, a 5 nanometer chipset that features an octa-core CPU capable of up to 2.5 gigahertz clock speeds coupled with an ARM Mali G68 GPU. This chipset doesn't gain the highest scores in our synthetic benchmarks, but when it comes to my real-world use, I didn't really find any major issues. Locally, the Galaxy A35 is officially configured with its one and only 8GB of memory with 256GB of internal storage. I've used the Samsung Galaxy A35 5G for a couple of weeks now, mostly using it for Netflix and Spotify binging, as well as checking, revising, and updating documents on the go via Google Docs and Sheets. So it's safe to say that whether browsing the web, streaming videos or playing games, the Galaxy A35 5G in general offers a responsive and lag-free experience. When it came to more graphically intensive games like Genshin Impact, the phone noticeably heats up faster than anything else. The game recommends setting graphics to low by default, but we have tried maxing out the graphics and frame rate, and it does boot but with a lot more noticeable stutters when there are more elements on the screen. And of course, the phone heats up faster. So keeping it at the default low won't make the game look its best, but will definitely play the smoothest. Powering the Galaxy A35 5G is a pretty sizable 5,000 mAh lithium-ion battery, which provides long-lasting power to keep up with any user's demands. It also gets support for 25-watt wired charging, which charges the 5,000 mAh cell up in an hour and a half with a 25-watt charging brick that isn't included in the box. Battery life and real-world use wasn't an issue for me who lightly games on the move, with my most resource-heavy task being binge-watching shows on Netflix. Setting the phone to airplane mode, the volume muted, and brightness set to 50% to account for mixed usage, in PC Mark's Work 3.0 battery test, the Galaxy A35 5G garnered a result of 10 hours and 57 minutes. And in our standard Yugatech video loop test, it resulted in 20 hours and 15 minutes, which is wild. 
Connectivity options include 5G support for the fastest mobile data connectivity available, dual nano SIM slots, and Wi-Fi 6 for reliable wireless connectivity. Bluetooth 5.3 enables seamless pairing with compatible devices for hassle-free data transfer and audio streaming. And actual call quality, whether on data or Wi-Fi calling for both video and audio calls, were superb, with no noticeable lags or loss in signal due to the device. This goes for text messaging as well. And are you guys even using Google Messages yet? I love being able to send images and videos and get to see if my messages are seen or not with my default messaging app. And if you guys too, let us know in the comment section below. So to conclude this video, we gotta talk about price. The Samsung Galaxy A35 5G has a retail price of 20,990 pesos for the 8 plus 256 GB configuration here in the Philippines. There is a 128 GB storage option that is officially available exclusively when purchasing a unit from Globe Telecom or Smart Communications. And if you ask me, this phone is sick. At less than 25,000 pesos, the Galaxy A35 is definitely worth considering at this budget. We get an amazing display and speaker system for media consumption, a good enough rear and selfie camera, good battery life, and an almost complete One UI experience because, again, there is no deck support on this phone, but that truly isn't a deal breaker unless you literally can't do your work without DeX. Although, if you're happy with everything from the Galaxy A35 5G, but wished for a bit more power and slightly better build materials without hitting a 30,000 budget, you should definitely take a look at the A35's bigger brother, the Galaxy A55 5G. You can check that video or our video review on that device here. So what did you guys think of the Samsung Galaxy A35 5G? Do you guys think it's worth picking up or does One UI make you wanna barf? Let us know in the comment section below. But if you enjoyed this video, found it informative or educational, or if this video has made you make a purchasing decision between phones, be sure to smack that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that bell icon so you get notified of our future uploads. Be sure to visit yugatech.com and follow us on our socials. That is Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok for the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this has been the Galaxy A35 5G, and this has been Miguel, and I'll see you in the next one.